Hi, so I don't know about you, but I don't really have a regular use for orchestral libraries in my home studio. I don't really produce or mix orchestral music and I also don't do any film scores usually. However, I have used some string arrangements before in songs for my band The Wash and I think it's always nice to have some extra colors for your productions. But then again, currently I wouldn't spend thousands of euros or dollars on a professional orchestral library. However, I recently found this video from Guy Mitchell Moore in my YouTube feed. Anyway, she does an orchestral arrangement with a very small and very cheap sound library. So in this video I'm going to have a look at Spitfire Audio's BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover. So let's go! So how do we get this library? Well let's have a look at the Spitfire Audio website. Now this is a general Spitfire Audio website and these are the orchestras that they have. And as you can tell these are pretty serious libraries ranging from well around 314 up to thousands of euros. However the one we're interested in you can find under orchestras BBC Symphony Orchestra and if you then scroll down you can see the Discover Edition and as you can see you can buy it now for 49 euros which is pretty cheap still but you can even get it for free because if you click on the free link you basically need to create an account with Spitfire Audio and you fill out a questionnaire and then they will send you a free download after 14 days. So you do need some patience, but you can get this library for free in that way. And if you want to buy it now, well, you can also do that, but then you need to pay 49 euros. Now I was patient, so I waited two weeks after watching Guy Mitchell Moore's video and registering for a free version. And yesterday I got an email that I could download the free version. They basically supply an application like so many companies nowadays. It is called the Spitfire Audio app. And as you can see, the only product I have is Symphony Orchestra Discover at the moment. So let's now open Cubase. And I created a new project and I can do add instrument. And one of them is BBC Symphony Orchestra. And you see that I get a dedicated plugin for this library. Now the nice thing is this library is small. It's slightly over 200 megabytes on disk, so that's really small for an orchestral sample library nowadays. But despite that, I think it sounds pretty nice, but let's first have a look at the features of the plugin. What you basically have here is that you can see all the various sections of the orchestra. Green sections are strings, first violin, second violin, violas, celli and basses. Blue are the woodwinds, piccolo, flutes, oboes, clarinets and bassoons, red is brass, horns, trumpets, tenor trombones, bass trombones and tubas, and yellow is the percussion, harp and celeste, percussion and tuned percussion. Now the position in this diagram also represents where the sound is coming from in the stereo image. For example, if I select first violins, they will be located on the left side of the stereo image. And if you go tuba, for example, it will be located more on the right side. Now, as you can see over here, there are various techniques that you can use for each section. And which techniques are available depends a bit on which section you're selecting. But for the violins, for example, you have long notes, spiccato, pizzicato, and tremolos. The techniques that you have for each section can also be assigned to keys on your keyboard. You can do that with this button over here. You can see that if I drag it left, you can select which keys control the techniques. There is a reverb control, but I have to say there's plenty of reverb on all of these instruments. So it's more likely that you will always have this set at zero and still have too much reverb actually. There's a slider that selects which dynamic layer is played. And that's just, well, it's a volume slider in essence. You have an indication of CPU usage, disk usage, memory usage. Like if I change sections, you will see that the memory uses slightly changes, but none of the sections actually takes a lot of memory. You can select the MIDI channel that the plugin will respond to. You can detune it, you can pan it, control the overall volume. You can you have settings for how the dynamics of the plugin are controlled, and you have some general settings for the behavior of knobs, for example, tuning of the audio, memory usage, 
and you can select the default preset that it starts up with. So very basic, but quite capable. Let's have a further listen to some of the sounds. Or maybe this one. So different percussion instruments on different keys. Tenor trombone. So pretty decent sounds, which I feel are quite usable to add some extra color to your productions or string sections or well, whatever you need. But there's more, let's return to the Spitfire Audio website for this. Because if we go back to the Symphony Orchestra Discover page, you can see that there's also walkthroughs, technique lists, audio demos, and there's templates. And if you click on those, and scroll down a bit further, you can see that there's templates for all their libraries basically, and also for the Discover library. And scroll down again, you can see that there are templates for, well, almost any DAW, and also for Cubase. Now they basically deliver two templates for Cubase. Now the first one is the multi-template, and I think what they've done in here is that they've added an instance of the plugin for every section in the orchestra, but also for every technique. For example, if you go to the violins, we have a violin one, the long legato technique, the short technique, the pizzicato technique, and the tremolo technique. For example, if we open this plugin, you can see it's the violet one with the long technique. If we open this virtual instrument, it's again first violins with the spiccato technique. So basically one virtual instrument for every section and every technique within that section. The template creator has added some reverbs in there, reverence with a nice impulse, which is, well, very suitable for an orchestra. On the second one, he has put room works. So all in all, a very nice template to start off with, especially if you want to do a full orchestral production, like maybe for a movie score or something like that. Now let's move on to an example of a nice usage of this library. Because like I said before, I was introduced to this library via a video from Guy Mitchell Moore that showed up in my YouTube feed. And you should check out his YouTube channel because it's really worthwhile. He's also using Cubase. And in one of his videos, he's demoing this sound library as well. And he's showing how he writes a full orchestral segment starting from just chords and then gradually arranging it with all these instruments that are available in the library. It's very interesting. It's a 50 minute video, so you really have to sit down and take the time for it. But I think it's really worthwhile, so check it out. I'll provide a link in the description below. And very graciously, Guy has also provided the Cubase project that he made during that video with the full orchestral segment. So that's this one. You can see there's lots of tracks. He's not using all sections or all techniques from all sections, but he's definitely using a lot of them. So let's have a quick listen to this orchestral arrangement. So, pretty impressive, no? For me, I immediately start thinking about a movie score for Lord of the Rings, for example, fantasy stuff. Pretty nice, and thanks to Guy for making this project available for download. So all in all, I think this is a very capable and very nice sample library for orchestral sounds. Definitely for the price of 49 euros or even free if you're willing to wait two weeks. The only downside I see so far, but I haven't actually used it in a production yet, is that the sounds are quite ambient. So you really get the inbuilt sound of a big orchestral hall, and that might not always be suitable for every production. But all in all, definitely thumbs up. And although I might be a bit late to the party because I think this library has been released for over a year already, some of you may have missed it as well. So hopefully it's of use to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the little bell icon so you know when I post another video. And for even more support, you can buy something via the affiliate links in the description. Highly appreciate it. Next up is my video on another free plugin, the Novell Piano VSTI by Steinberg, which is a very cinematic piano. So if you would like to use this orchestral library for soundtracks, the piano might be a nice fit. Have a look at that, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.